Yahoo! Whoa, welcome back everyone. Um, today, we're gonna to continue our talk about why do small businesses fail? Specifically, what we're gonna cover off today is some of the maths. <laughs> Stay tuned though, because if you don't know some of these basic things we're gonna cover off, then your business is gonna fail. So stay tuned, we're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm not an accountant, so I'm gonna make it fun. Oh, that's a bad joke. <laughs> so let's get started. Whoa! <laughs> Welcome to my forest here. Hey, uh, in England they have an old saying that you can't see the forest for the trees. And it has a couple of different meanings. I'll let you look up online what they mean. But basically, it's about confusion is one meaning. And that, you know, you can't see one thing because there's too much clutter of other things. Why do small businesses fail? I've mentioned in the two previous uh, episodes about two major reasons. This is the third major reason. Now I've left it to this point because it's a little bit of maths. Don't get scared. Stay with me. <laughs> and the fact that you've come to this point after the intro and you've stayed here tells me one thing. You're a focused individual. Because if you don't know about the numbers, then in business, you're gonna have a problem. Now, I'm not a big person about accounting and numbers and so on. That's why I employ accountants. <laughs> My focus is developing and building and creating businesses. But if I don't know about the numbers, then I have a problem. Small businesses fail because they don't focus on the numbers. And there's some key numbers that you need to be aware of. There's not many when you get started. As you grow, you must learn your numbers skills. You learn from your accountants and your CPAs. And when you get started though, you just need to know the basics. Now, I think there's five key things you must know when you start. And you must know the difference net profit, gross profit, net profit margin, gross profit margin, and turnover. Now, if you don't know what those mean, right now you must go online and look at them up. Here's some examples of some websites. It's a two minute search, just do it. This video is not about telling you how to do those things. It's simple, just go and look at it online. Maybe in the future we actually have two CPAs in our team for the UBLA. So maybe we'll get them to do some accounting and numbers uh, videos. And uh, they're not boring people, they're really good people those two. And <laughs> they're really great team members. So basically, go look online now. Have a look at this one. Let's just have a look at one together. This is gross profit margin. This is basically a ratio. Oh, I'm getting scary, ratios! It's basically one number over top of another number. Not very scary. <laughs> This is an important ratio. Let's talk about this one, and then we'll talk about turnover. And we probably won't do too much more apart from it, because if you know about these two, these will give you the understanding about why it's important. I talked about Fast Feast in New Zealand a couple of times. When we started that business, we had many products. Some of the products we put in the fridge, we bought them from a supplier, pre-made. They had a low profit. That means if we bought it for $10, then basically we're only making, making 50 cents profit, which is very small. Where if we made chips, for example, then the base ingredients might cost us $1, but we're selling it for $3. So you can see there's something there about the profit. Now, if you don't understand that this key thing about the, the profit margin, you're gonna be making big mistakes because you think, oh, I'm selling tons and tons and tons of drinks. I'm doing really, really good because your turnover is good. At the end of the day, you count your cash and go, yeah, I'm rich. I'm going to spend it. Oh, that's not profit. That is turnover. Out of that, you've got to take your wages, you've got to take your electricity, you've got to take your cost of materials, blah, 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 blah. And you're finally left with your net profit. So big warning, that money that you get out of your till at the end of the day is not yours. You must understand your net profit margin if you want to take money out of that. So for example, your net profit margin might be 2%. That I means if you get $100, you can take two and put it in your back pocket, knowing that you can cover all your bills. But if you're smart, you'll take one, put one in the bank as capital reserves, like coronavirus. So many businesses have gone bust because they have no capital reserves. Don't spend all your money, that's just an extra tip. <laughs> put some aside as capital reserves. 
So I'm getting off track. So basically I want to keep this fairly simple because your online, can, online searches can tell you everything. But remember that. So when we were in New Zealand, we stocked up our fridge. We sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars of soft drinks. Made no profit. If we didn't understand gross profit margin, that when we sell that drink for two dollars, we're only getting like 10 cents. You have to sell 2,000 drinks just to pay one wage for one person for one day. Huh? When we worked that out just to go and buy a new hat for one of our staff members, and we worked it out how many drinks we had to sell, and you should do this exercise, you'll be shocked. You might have to sell 20 soft drinks to buy one hat profit, because when you buy a hat, that's pure cost, that's coming out of your pure profit. So I'm getting things a little bit confusing here, but I just want you to really get this. You must know these basic numbers, that the money coming out of your till is not yours. Don't start pocketing it. Make sure you understand your margins. Make sure that every single product you sell, you know the gross profit margin. Every product you sell will have a different gross profit. That's how you know what to market. That's how you know when you do promotions and specials. Because for example, chips, high profit, if you're making it in a certain way, but burgers, even more higher profit. That's what we noticed in our shop in Fast Feast. We noticed that our burgers were super high profit because the materials were very cheap. The labor was okay, but the cost and the value in people's minds was very high. So they paid a lot for them. So we made a lot of money on burgers. So if we did a promo, we do a promo on burgers, not on chips because chips was less profit. So that gives you an idea. My name is David Anthony. I hope this wasn't too long. <laughs> Welcome to my forest. And basically, you know, don't let yourself get confused. Don't let yourself not see the trees for the forest or the forest for the trees or whatever. Don't get confused with those numbers and don't be afraid of them. Learn them, know them, use them, be successful. That's why I'm here to help you be successful in your business and go further and faster in business and in life. Why not? Let's do it all. <laughs> So I think I've told you my name a few times now. I'm excited today. My name is like David Anthony. <laughs> I'm the founder and creative director for UBLA. And basically, I'm the visionary director as well. Why not have three titles? It's good. I, I created the darn thing. I can create as many titles as I like, as long as I get results. So in your business, get out there, create some wealth, create some results, and have a lot of fun in your business. Catch me for the next video. Check the links out below. This is part of a mini series, guys. So this is part three. So down below, you'll find the links for part one and part two. Go check them out. Watch them in sequence because there's actually a story going on. Otherwise, you don't know what's going on. Catch you very soon. Woo!